The, the galleries, uh, we're selecting cities and just starting off with a few and uh, we're going to have items like this uh, Dr. Carson mentioned about Madam C.J. Walker. And, and here's an actually a, a picture of Madam C.J. Walker. And she is, uh, she's, she's a woman that was the first million heiress on her own horsepower she worked in for North it. America. And she developed products like this. This is hair and scalp preparation Where did for, you get for that? women of color. Where did well, you get I'll tell you what, you <laughs> there's a story behind every one. I'll bet. I, I have four items from her, and it's, it's hard to find just one. And, 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 and how I, old is that, Joel? This is probably around, I'd say, the 30s, 40s, right in that, that realm. She was the Mary Kay of her day. She, absolutely. Your project, by the way, is targeted to black men, what age range? Uh, the, the book was uh, for young men 12 to 27. Uh, this actually is going to be for everyone. We're, we're going to have a whole wall dedicating each gallery for white abolitionists who, who fought for freedoms. Mm -hmm. And many paid a dear price and some the ultimate price. Uh, and, and so that everyone can, can come in. It's not about guilt. It's not about anger. It's just about the truth. And everyone can leave with a pep in their step. I mentioned this about the, the age range, the, the, the target audience for, for the book. Uh, because you've been challenged. That's not a great literacy group. That's right. And, and, and yet, People a heritage like this says, you know what, it doesn't have to stay that way. That's right. That's very true. And, and I think it, it's, it's uh, helping people to uh, somehow, uh, I found that bringing artifacts, I was at a, an elementary school just last week, a thousand kids, and the principal came up later and he says, I've, ne he says, I've been around, I've never seen our kids be this attentive. attentive. And it was just uh, holding up a piece and telling the story. Mm -hmm. And, and just th that, I think, here's the, the, the famous life. Canadian Jubilee just tip Singers. tip it forward a little bit there, Joel. The famous Canadian Jubilee Singers. Uh, they, they spent, uh, I think it was three years in Great Britain, five years in the United States, traveling around, singing songs. Uh, of course, the, the Fisk University Jubilee Singers were the ones who started it. How far back are we going? Uh, we're going back to probably the 1870s. 1890s, right in that time frame. But a lot of songs would have been lost that were sung on the plantations if it weren't for individuals who were willing to do this at, at great personal sacrifice. This is a letter from a gentleman by the name of Benjamin Drew. And uh, he, he's a, a gentleman that uh, actually, uh, what he did is it, he heard about uh, people f from uh, of African descent who were moving uh, through the Underground Railroad to Canada. 1895? 1895. Well, here's a book. This is not the origi an original edition. This is a 1969 edition, but it's uh, from 1856. And uh, he, he wrote, you notice there, there's uh, individuals uh, from, from St. Catharines, from Toronto, that there are 47,000 people in Toronto at this time, uh, 1,000 people of African descent in Toronto at this time. Now, is this thanks to the Underground Railroad? Yes. Wow. Uh, Hamilton, Galt, London. Uh, you just see all these, uh, all these Chatham, Windsor. Chatham, Windsor, yes. yep. And, and he interviewed these individuals, along with Harriet Tubman. Mm -hmm. and, and the stories in here are, are stunning. And it's, I, I could, I, when I first read this, I, I couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. It was like reading a fast-paced novel. Because what, would, what, he would begin, what people would begin to share is, is what motivated them to want to leave their plantation, how they left, how they were hunted. And, and then, then some people had dreams where they would see a home or they would see a road or they would see the picture, an image of a person. And when they saw that place, they'd know it was a safe place because they saw it in their dream. Somebody was operating yes. from <laughs> out of this world. That's right. In this whole operation, this Very rescue true. mission. And that's part of your mission. You're pointing, even these men you're weeping with, you're, you're pointing them to the Lord, that's right. their creator. And that's what return to glory is all about. It's not the return to ancient Egyptian cult religions. It, it's, not, it, it's a return to our creator. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's in a sense saying, uh, I'm comfortable in my skin because you made me this way. Uh, I thank you for the way you designed me. Fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> that's <laughs> oh, a message I've been all of us can use. drooling over this one. I love musicals. How, is this is this old? This is the original edition, hardcover edition. Uh, this this is a movie that was released in 1959, 1960 time frame, and mm -hmm. you turn it around, and here we have uh, Porgy and Bess. We have Pearl, Pearl Bailey, Bailey. Uh, a friend of presidents, uh, a, a wonderful woman, and guess how much she was paid for her part 
in, Pearl, in Porgy and Bess. I don't have to guess. I can show and tell it, but you tell us. <laughs> this is the check that she was paid, and I'm not sure if it was a, a one-time check or what, but it's $5,002. Notice Samuel Goldwyn, Goldwyn's wow. uh, production, Hollywood, California, $5,002.30. That could have been one month. It uh, could have been uh, the entire check. It was a lot of money in that day. On the back, she signs it, Pearl Bailey and oh, Pearl Belson. Should and, I show it this uh, way? Yeah, let, let's, let me pull you this do. out here just for a second. Just, uh, and if you notice on the back, that uh, she married the drummer you were yes. telling me. Uh, see Pearl Bailey and then Pearl Belson. Very rare to find her to sign uh, both signatures. Here's something that uh, we uh, many people have seen the movie Amazing Grace. Yes. Well, this is an actual letter that was uh, uh, written, handwritten see it fine by William Wilberforce. You can see his name, okay. a very strong signature That's, right this here. This is not a copy. Oh no, no, this is the real deal. And then you see his signature right here. I'm going to tip it up. I'm going to touch it. I have to touch it. <laughs> and then wow. here's, here is a book that, was, uh, that he wrote. And here I want to show an image of William Wilberforce. Uh, he, here's, here's a book that he wrote. And you can see him. And, and if you notice, I'm going to move it over here. The prevailing religious system of, professional, of professed Christians. Uh, he, he taught, it's about real Christianity by William Wilberforce, Esquire. What in the in higher and middle classes <laughs> contrasted with real Christianity. <laughs> you go, guy. <laughs> what a wonderful man. Oh. He went against all odds. To, just to think of what this man gave dealt his life. with. He gave his life. And then here's John Newton. Uh, this is a very old edition. You can see it's barely hanging together. But I, I, I opened up this spot here. And this was um, to, to a wife. <laughs> happened to be the wife, his wife. And notice here, his first voyage to Africa, 1750. And here he's writing to his wife, and he is just communicating to her the issues, the things that he was, he was dealing with on his first trip to, on his voyage of Af to Africa. Wow. And no wonder you write about being an entrepreneur. How <laughs> did you get these goodies? I just... Here, here's something. I just want to show oh, this, too. This is so important. Yes. Here is, is something that uh, Count Constantine de Volney, around uh, 18, 1798, he etched an image of the Sphinx of Giza. Now, if you notice very carefully, you notice that the lips and the nose are intact. Uh, I have an image uh, a little after 1810. Something happened, and, and I, I can't say for sure what happened, uh, but all I know is it was during the French op occupation of, of uh, Egypt during the Napoleonic Egyptian campaign. And whether they used it for target practice, no one knows for sure. But uh, that's the, the time period in which it was defaced. But there's a strange, uh, a strange thing that has happened to so many of these images, the noses and the, and lips. the lips. I mean, what kind of earthquake would do that? <laughs> I don't know. And I, I don't want to crawl in the hearts and minds of people at that time, but all I know is it's very strange that uh, it seems like the aphroid features were knocked off. D dare I read what the Count wrote? Go ahead. This will shock some people. Yes. On seeing, I'm going to put it back up here. You hold it, Joel. On seeing the head, typically Negro in all its features, I remembered the remarkable passage of Herodotus, who said, The ancient Egyptians were true Negroes of the same type as all native-born Africans. Just to think that this race of black men today are slaves and the object of scorn, the very race to which we owe our arts, sciences, and even the use of speech. Joel has 2,500 items. These are just a few of them that are going to be a part of what I think will be many galleries around the world. They won't just be museums, Joel. They will be places of learning, of mentoring. Yes. This vision is a thing of beauty. It's so exciting. Wonderful. I've done an economic viability study on it. Every gallery is going to have a small uh, screening area for maybe 20, 25 people. And, uh, and we're, we're going to show the film, Return to Glory, every hour on the hour in every gallery in the world in the language specific to that region of the world. So French, wonderful. Portuguese, Spanish. It's so, I'm just, it just keeps me awake at night sometimes. Well, I've just, I've been cooking since I in, inhaled all of this. Charlotte Bronte wrote, prejudices, it is well known, are most difficult to eradicate from the heart whose soil has never been loosened or fertilized by education. 
Mm. I believe the education you're bringing us, Joel, is going to make a huge difference. It certainly has in my heart. And uh, return to glory.org if you are interested in these materials. Uh, finding out more about this wonderful man and his mission. Thank you so much. And black101.com, black101.com is the website if they want to see uh, about 90 pages worth of, of information about this Black History Collection. Delicious. God bless you. Thank you.